thank you for your absolute generosity during this lockdown time. I absolutely stand amazed as your pastor, how you have kept us strong in your prayer, but also with your generosity, how you've enabled us as a church to feed hundreds of thousands of people through the food parcels. I really honor you and I thank you and I pray that this season of recovery, that God's gonna open the floodgates of heaven and he's gonna pour out a blessing upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for being faithful with your tithes and your offerings and supporting the baby project, supporting the feeding project, making the world a better place for other people. Also, I want to thank you for supporting the Umtata project where we are going to finish that building for Pastor Don by the end of this year and open it next year in partnership with Umtata Christian Center. And we are gonna believe God for great revival. Further good news, it is a lockdown but we are never in a shutdown mode at CRC. I'm standing on the corner of our parking deck and we, through your generosity, have managed to buy this piece of land next door where we are gonna expand our parking after this lockdown for all the people that are coming to church. Also, on that corner, we are going to build a beautiful school and a Bible college where we can take children out of this community out of previously disadvantaged areas and we can empower them and we can raise them up to be the future politicians, business leaders, ministers of God in South Africa. Come on, this is our time. We love you, we miss you. I can't wait to be in that building with all of you worshiping and praising the Lord. Also in Pretoria, that empty building is waiting for you as it is in Blumenau, the South and the North. We are believing God to end this year on a high. In the name of Jesus, God said, I will crown this year with my goodness. A big shout out of love from me to all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your prayer and for your generosity, for your giving spirit and for being people that have treasured the purpose of God's kingdom, even in this very difficult time. I pray that God supplies all of your need I pray that God opens the windows of heaven and that God amazes you and that you will recover all and more in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen.
what the Lord has done is open a door in Russia that we never had during this COVID time. So we are going to plunder hell in Russia and we are going to preach the gospel in Russia and we are going to start churches in Russia. In the name of Jesus, we are not about to sit down on our blessed assurances. We choose to get up. We may be knocked down, but we do not stay down. We get back up again and we get back up stronger and more determined. Come on, somebody, jump to your feet and shout amen.
Here in 
team of pastors and leaders waiting online to meet with you and trust God with you. God is extremely faithful, so if that is you, please connect with us as we continue to worship tonight. You were here When my heart was stranded far away from home when my scars ran deep and I was all alone When I filled this void with things that took my soul You were there When darkness took a hold of my heart When fear gripped my soul and tore it apart Life became too much and felt too hard You were there Searching, never giving up on me Knocking at my heart relentlessly Saying I am here, here to stay your goodness I'll sing of all you've done there's a way I would have made it if it wasn't for your love when I find myself surrounded I praise you without fear cause I know that you are here you were there fire next to me when there was no way out you split the sea when a giant thought he had the victory you were there you opened up my eyes so I could see when you spoke peace to calm the storm in me When you sacrificed your son to set me free all around us you are here your perfect love casts out all our fears and your comfort floods our hearts
sing of all your goodness. I'll sing of all you've done. There's a way I would have made it if it wasn't for your love. When I find myself surrounded, I'll praise you without fear. Cause I know that you are here Cause I know that you are here
Jesus, Jesus, there's no other name. You're the truth and the way. There's no higher name but Jesus, Jesus, there's no higher name by which I am saved. There's no higher name but Jesus, Jesus. Come on, wherever you are tonight, lift your hands. We lift the name of Jesus over South Africa, over Africa, over Russia. Whatever country you are, there's no other name. Let's come on right where you are tonight. Whoever you are, wherever you are, jump out of your seat in front of your television and give the Lord Jesus Christ a mighty praise celebration in the name of Jesus Christ. He's worthy. He still is King of Kings and Lord of Lords and His name is still above every other name. And Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus. Philippians 2 verse 9, 11. Therefore God has highly exalted Him and given Him the name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in the heaven, things on the earth, things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Come on tonight, the many thousands in this building by faith, the many hundreds of thousands in front of your televisions tonight, shout it tonight, say Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We are always going to be praising God. We are always going to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And to God be all the glory. Come on, come on, come on, come on. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. We want to welcome you all tonight with us on Faith TV. Dr. Andre and Jenny, great honor to be with you tonight. Facebook Live, we welcome you. YouTube, we welcome you tonight. CRC Online, radio stations all the way from Russia. Millions of people watching the program in Russia. God's opened a door of opportunity. Great to talk to you. We're looking forward to the conference over there. Also in America, Europe, India, China, all over Africa, wherever you are from, please talk to us. We know that God is in control and you may be in a lockdown tonight, but we know that God is going to make a way. And we know we are heading for the greatest revival that this world has ever seen in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you can tonight and you have breath, then just say the say fire 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 in jesus name amen god bless you take your seat in the name of jesus hallelujah wide awake wide awake in the name of jesus hallelujah things are changing it is a new day and a new season of uh, great um, opportunity uh, don't forget dream week this week um, starting on tuesday night seven o'clock um, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. I have 30 minutes with you tonight. It's not a long time, but things are going to change very shortly. For our CRC members, you will be notified, contacted. Uh, we are excited about the direction we are heading into. We are making provision for you. And let me say to our members in Johannesburg, from next week, there will be two services. We have so many people that want to come to church, especially watching us on One Gospel. So Johannesburg, there will be two services, 8.30 and 10.30, also here in Pretoria, 8.30 and 10.30, also in Bloemendijk, in both buildings in Bloemendijk, 8.30 and 10.30, and everything will be safe. We've had our own scientists, we're working out programs, 
There will be excess everywhere. Uh, everything will be according to government regulation. And we are going to open our churches safe for the glory of God. And we are going to plunder hell. And we are going to populate heaven in Jesus' name. We need a revival. We need a youth revival. Come on, all the young people in this place. Come on, those thousands sitting up there on the balcony tonight. Shout amen, the young people on that side. Shout amen, okay? Six months has been long enough. Time to get up and time to get busy. Amen. Tonight, Exodus chapter 3, and I want to talk from verse 1. The Bible says, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Say it tonight, say fire without being consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn out. A lot of burnt out people. A lot of stressed out people. A lot of young people that have backslidden in this lockdown. That's okay. Because we're going to get you back in the fire of God. And God's going to wake you up. And God's going to stir you up. And you are going to be part of the solution. And this revival that will bring reformation in Jesus' name. So when the Lord saw that Moses turned aside to look. So you're going to have to come back to church. <laughs> you know, as good as television is, television is not going to do it. As good as Jim is. Look at me. I went back to gym for two weeks and look at me. How I changed. <laughs> Amen. I have a home gym, but it's just not good enough. And I can also do Christianity. I think more than anybody else, I can do Christianity in my home, in front of my television. I think my relationship with God is strong enough. But that's not what Jesus birthed on the day of Pentecost. And that's not what the world needs right now. The world doesn't need Christians in isolation and Christians in a comfort little huddle sitting in front of their television. It's time to rise up, to stand up, and to be more radical for Jesus than we ever have been. Come on, do I have a young person in the house in front of their television just make a noise, make the devil mad? Because God is going to baptize this young generation in a fire. And I want to tell you, you are going to be the generation that's going to turn this world upside down. What took other generations, generations to do, you are going to do in one generation. God's going to set you on fire and you are going to bring revival and you are going to bring reformation and you are going to be restoration and you are going to change the injustices of the past, not by might nor by power, but by the Holy Ghost. If you believe it tonight, young man, young woman, shout Amen. Hallelujah. I can't wait for you to get back in church because I need to get my hands on you with uh, uh, the physical distancing, okay? But I need to get some of you under the glory spout. Too many other people have been spouting over you. Polluting you. Taking you back where you were. We need to get you back to the fire. Amen. I'm not talking about the fire that burns a school. Easy to burn a school. Talk about a reformation that's filled with retribution. Those people are going to become less in this country. Watch. Too many people are praying for our continent. And Africa will be the continent that God is going to use to bring a blessing to the nations of the world that will bring justice to the nations of the world. Listen to me tonight. I don't care what the color of your skin is. You were born for a time like this. I don't care what your past. I don't care what your background. You were born for this time. You were born in South Africa. I don't care if people say you go back to Europe. God never meant for you to be in Europe. God meant for you to be in South Africa. You are a South African and you are part of the solution in South Africa. Everybody say amen in Jesus' name. And, and on that note, 
I want to say with what is happening against doctors in this country is, a, is an atrocity that people think they can take the law in their own hands against our medical profession. We will not accept it. We will not tolerate it. Our doctors will be protected. Our doctors are valuable. They are frontline workers. And no Christian will stand for anybody that thinks they can intimidate our doctors and our, and, and, and our, 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 our frontline workers. We are not tolerating these things. Listen to me very carefully. And don't tell me we can bring doctors from other country. Yes, we can, but we should not. I want to say to many of you that are thinking to leave the country, don't. Don't move because of a negative. I talk to people black and white. And I told you after next year, you're not going to hear the word black and white from this mouth or from this pulpit. But because so many of you have backslidden back into your skin color, I have to get you back to the cross, to Christianity. It's like people say, I want to go back to a black pastor. That's insulting pastors. Let me just tell you very clearly, because that would be like a pastor say, I just want white members. Think, man. Listen, I'm comfortable with conflict. So this is the best time for CRC. We thrive when there's conflict. We have grown in leaps and bounds in this lockdown. We don't fear intimidation. We don't fear confrontation. We don't fear a lockdown. We don't. We become stronger. Come on, say amen, young person, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So when God saw Moses draw close to him, God drew close to, David, to Moses and God called to him from the midst of the bush. And the bush was what? Burning. You're not going to go and find God in a graveyard. You're not going to go find God among the dead. And you're not going to go find God in cold religion. You're not going to go find God in your historical, cultural, sacred cows. Because God's not dead. He's alive. He's not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living. So God called to him and Moses said, here I am. You want to recover, then you need a conversation with God. You need to get to the place where God gets control of your heart and your life. Where you don't lead the conversation, but where God leads the conversation. Where you don't tell God what should happen, but you listen to God. And you get the mind of God for your situation and for your future. Remember, Moses grew up in the courts of Pharaoh. Moses was a very intellectual man, surrounded by wealth for 40 years. Then Moses, knowing that he was called to be a deliverer, preempted the will of God, and he killed an Egyptian that was beating up on one of his people. Then Moses had to run away for 45 years, we know this. He ran to the backside of the desert and literally Moses was in lockdown, called to be a mighty deliverer, but because of his own failure, his own mistakes, and preempting the will of God, which many people want to do, young people especially, they're not patient in the process of God. They know things want to be reformed, so they want to reform it from the bottom up. You never can. You have to be patient for God to raise you to a place of prominence so that you can reform that injustice from the top down in Jesus' name. Doesn't mean you don't challenge injustice where you are. But you think you making a loud noise on social media is going to change every anything. You just fall in one of the categories of being a hater. And the longer you shout, the less friends you are going to end up with. I know you don't like me to tell you the truth, but somebody has to. Somebody has to look you in your face, love you enough to tell you the truth. So God says to him, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy. Old sermon in that, where people have to get their respect back for God, their reverence back for God. 
where our government has to get reverence back for God, where people have to get their reverence back for God, where people have to acknowledge that there is a higher power, that there is a God who makes the final decisions, where a young man gets back to the place where he bows before God and he gives God total access and rule in his life. If you don't see God for who He is, you will never see yourself for who you are. So what happened to Paul on the road to Damascus. Paul was persecuting the church, thinking he was doing God a favor. As many people do, they pursue a cause. They're zealous, and, but their cause is wrong. Or their cause is premature, preempting God's will. So Moses comes into God's presence and God says to him, before we can have this conversation, you have to realize who you are talking to. If you don't talk to God with absolute reverence, you will never listen to what God says. He's just another voice. So God's about to have a very serious conversation with Moses, but he said the first thing is, you have to take the sandals off your feet. What's God saying? You have to unclothe yourself. You have to get rid of your past. You have to get rid of your pain. You have to get rid of your, de- your, your, your yesterday. You have to get rid of your issues. You cannot come and have a conversation and there's a veil that clouds this conversation. You need to be naked when you come to me. You need to be naked. Your heart has to be open. You have to be ready for me to say what I want to say to you. You cannot come and, and, and listen to me up to a point because then my fire will not change you. You take the sandals. You take the place where you've been standing. You take the place of your own identity. You take it off. And you come into my presence, not as an Afrikaner, not as an Englishman, not as a Corsa, not as a Zulu. By the way, I want to say this. I'm not against culture. We're multicultural. I think all cultures are beautiful. I think all people are beautiful. Everybody's created in the image of God. But if you want a conversation with God, you come empty. And it's something that many people can't do because they come to God with a but, like Gideon, but I'm the least, but I'm the weakest. Where are your miracles? Where's your promises? Blah, 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 blah. And God never entertained it. God said, go in this might of yours. Go in this power of yours. I need you. Get over, get over, get up, get over and get on. In the name of Jesus, get out of your well of depression. Get out of your well of self-pity. Get out of your well of, 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 of rejection. Get out of your well of inferiority. Listen, when you're in the presence of God, God will change you. He actually will. I sat in a meeting this last week. How many meetings all the time, as I said this last week? Zoom meetings, Zoom meetings, Zoom meetings. Like full also a bay and... Um, Zoom, 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 and I sat with very influential leaders this last week, and the one person, because I said, uh, and uh, okay, I need to choose my words carefully, I, I said to uh, the people, I said, listen, I'm tired now, I, after 27 years, I'm tired that every conversation is color-coded, I'm tired that people will just talk out on behalf of one person, I'm tired that there's not one black pastor who will say anything positive towards white people and tell them that you're actually part of South Africa and that we actually love you and we want you in South Africa. I said, I've not heard any of you say anything positive. And then the one brother, it was a rather intense conversation. He jumped up from the one side and he said, but science says it takes 200 years for people to get over the pain of racism. I said, well, I better then, then I should still be mad with the English. Because the English put my great-grandmother and my father's, my, my, my grandfather's brothers in the concentration camp. So uh, I should still be mad with every English person. Don't look at me like that. I'm telling you the truth. I understand these things we have to work through, but we're not going to change these things in a place of intellect. We need something supernatural. We need something called the fire of God in the name of Jesus Christ. We need the fire of God that will bring a reform, the fire of God that will bring reconciliation, the fire of God that will break the, the curse of poverty. 
the fire of God that will erase the hearts of people. You know, I, I, when I went to school, I, I was six years old, and you've heard this, but it's my story, and you better get a story as well. Otherwise, you're just part of somebody else's story, right? You can tell your story with authority. If you have a story, and if you had an encounter with God. My great-grandmother always told us, and my grandmother always told us, how the English came and took them off the farm. And how they killed their friends that would not bow to a certain flag. And, and, and I don't even know the difference between English and Afrikaans, but it filled me with hatred. First Monday morning I went to school, I hit a little English boy. He had glasses on. I smashed him. Smashed his glasses so they sat like that. Just because he was English in the class next to me. Because that was passed on, that pain. People were sitting in churches with their pain. Justifying their pain. And I know your pain is real. But we need to allow God to heal us. We need to allow God to deliver us. We need to allow God to free us. We need to allow God to fill us with His glory and His power so we can rise up together in Africa and we can rebuild Africa and we can give a future for every person in Africa in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, every born again child of God, this is a good time to shout amen and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. And don't tell me I don't understand the atrocities of yesterday. Don't tell me that. I know more than you. You're 23 years old. I fought this battle when you were not even a memory in your mother's mind, man. I have conversations that you don't even think about. What do you mean I don't understand? Injustice. What's happening in our world. But you want to change that institutional racism in your company, then rise above it. Be better. Get the promotion. Get the directorship. Even if everybody says you will not get the job, you believe God and God will promote you. God will give you favor. And God will put you in the seat of directorship so you can change that injustice in that company. People are carrying fire, but it's the wrong fire. So God comes to Moses and there's a purpose. Why the fire of God is burning and why God wants a conversation with Moses. Not to give him a goose bump. I don't want churches open just to preach sermons. Our influence has increased more than any other church in South Africa factually. That's just reality, okay? We want our churches open so we can firstly take care of those who are suffering and secondly mobilize the hundreds of thousands of people that we have follow us to change things in South Africa with the fire of God. Amen. So he says, moreover, I'm the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses had had his face for he was afraid Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon God the Lord said I've surely seen the oppression of my people that's why God came when we talk about revival this wave of revival is going to be different it's not going to give you a gold, gold filling it's not going to get feathers floating in the building not going to be a prophetic move where God tells you your name. Because if you don't know your name, you're in a sad state already. I need to, don't need to go to a meeting for somebody to tell my name. Hello. If you don't know your name, go look at your birth certificate, please. The church is not a kindergarten school. The church is not an entertainment industry. 
The church is the place where the fire of God burns. Where the fire of God changes people. Where the fire of God disrupts people's lives. Where the fire of God confronts issues in our lives. There's nothing comfortable and safe about belonging to a church where the fire of God is burning because the fire of God will not leave you where it finds you. It's going to change you. It's going to rearrange things in your life and it's going to set you on a path of life where even things that you never noticed, you will begin to notice and you will become the hand of Jesus. You will become the voice of Jesus. You will become a preacher of the gospel. You will heal the brokenhearted. You will alleviate the plight of the poor in the name of Jesus. You will not just follow Jesus for a goosebump and make him part of your program. He will be the program of your life. Listen. I mean, if churches mean to open the same way, let the churches stay closed. People don't come back differently. They shouldn't go back. If we don't change our ways to heal the oppressed, says, I've seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. And I've heard they cry because they tossed maskers, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down to deliver them. That's the purpose of the fire. A pastor asked me this week in that same meeting, and, and it's, it's not criticizing anybody. I, I really, it's not my intention. Because it's anonymous. Nobody knows who I'm talking about. And he said, you know, and I've heard this all over the world where people ask me, how can we get fire into the next generation? And my answer is always the same. You can't give what you don't have. So if you're not burning in the pulpit, nobody in the pew will carry any fire. You don't set a church on fire from the pew. You set the church on fire from the pulpit in the name of Jesus. We don't need comfortable little three-point sermons at this time of crisis in our world. We need somebody that will radically reform the hearts of people by the power of the Holy Ghost. Says, I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians to bring them up from the land into a good and large land. Restoration. To land flowing with milk and honey. Say it. Say 2021. Say it. Say 2021 will be a year of divine restoration in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything that was broken by this COVID devil virus, we are going to fix and take it to a higher place. Every business that was burned, we are going to see God restore those businesses, every relationship every person's physical body, every person's mental disposition. We are going to see a breath of God because our God is a God of restoration. I believe it. I declare it. We'll go higher than ever. Amen. Come down to deliver them from the hand of the Egyptians to bring them into a land of milk and honey, to a place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites, Alaranites. So we're going to have many battles, but we fight from a place of victory. Now therefore behold the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I've also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore and I will send you to Pharaoh that you bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I? Next thing Moses says, but God, who are you? Next thing Moses says, God, I don't have what it takes. Thank God he stays at the bush long enough. The bush that burned, that wasn't consumed. I tell you something, if God is in something, there's a fire. Hebrews 12, 29, the Bible says, our God is a consuming fire. When you get into God's presence, it does something in your heart. It doesn't just do something in your head. It challenges you 
on the inside in the name of Jesus Christ. He lifts you out of your comfort, out of your holy bubble into being part of God's plan of deliverance. And we need that. I'll tell you just a moment in God's presence. That's why we need our church back. We need young people back. We're going to talk to you because you're the solution. You're the answer. You're going to come back and God's fire is going to fall upon you. God's going to break depression off of you. Many young people struggling with depression. God's going to break that depression off of you in a moment. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you have lost your visions, your dreams. You are hopeless. God's going to break it off on you. Some of you got addicted to things that you used to be addicted. That thing is going to fall off of you. Because when the fire of God comes, it burns out the hay, the chop and the stubble. And it's going to burn something else back in your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why God promised the fire of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. We can't do this thing without fire. We are not going to reform our world without the fire of the Holy Ghost. We are not going to fight unrighteous fire without righteous fire. We need to carry more fire than any radical politician. We need to be more on fire for the cause of Jesus Christ than people are for unjust causes in the name of Jesus. We need a Christ revolution. We need young people that are radical, young people that are unashamed, young people that will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, young people that are unafraid in the name of Jesus Christ. Am I talking to somebody here tonight? Shout amen. You are the key. And I interpret anything through the Word of God. Light versus darkness. And I thank God that light always prevails. But whenever God does something, He needs to find someone, a catalyst, a believer. So Mazo stays at the presence of God. And He's attracted to what? Fire. Not just any fire. Fire that is not consumed. Fire that does something in him. The same fire that got a hold of me when I was 18 years old. The same fire that still burns in me today. A fire that cannot be quenched. A fire that cannot be squelched. A fire that cannot be intimidated. Come on. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every generation needs an encounter with God's fire. Every man, woman and of God needs an encounter with God's fire. So dream week, they're telling me my time is up. I haven't even started. Dream week. We're going to, you know, right now we can't put 10 million people in the building, but we'll do what we can. But we're opening that outside facility. We are going to see God's fire. You, you don't, listen, you don't need 10 million people to change. You need people on fire. And I pray tonight wherever you are, that there's a hunger in your heart. That you just come to God naked. You come as you are. You come without all the excuses. And I know you've been hurt. People have mistreated you. You're mad about a lot of things. But don't let that anger consume you. Get into the presence of God so God's fire can consume that anger that's going to turn into hatred and destroy your future. Tonight you're watching, and I want to say before I go, because our time is almost up on TV, that God loves you, and God sent His Son because of you. Maybe you've lost yourself. Maybe if you died, you don't know that you'll go to heaven. Come on, young person, right where you are tonight. It's easy. Just give yourself back to Him. Put your hand on your heart tonight, right where you are, and say, Jesus, I give myself back to you tonight. I open my heart, and I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. Thank you that you died for my sin. I believe you rose from the grave. I believe you're alive. Tonight, I surrender my life to you in Jesus' name. Please write us. Jump on our social media platform, strc.org.za, and continue to follow the service in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give them a big God bless you, all these people, in Jesus' name. Amen. Not going to change our world without righteous fire. 
Remember when, 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 when two cities didn't accept Jesus Christ? Take your seat for a moment. I won't be long. How we need church open. How we need people in the presence of God. Just understand one thing. I've had the privilege to be here every Sunday, twice, for six months, in the presence of God. These musicians, we've had the time of our life in God's presence, right? We've had church. That's just reality. I don't know how you do this without having church. I don't. I don't care what people say, because I meet a lot of flat batteries that say, oh, praise God, I have my relationship with God, praise the Lord. And I say, yeah, oh, you flat battery. I, you, you don't inspire me. Because the purpose of the fire is to go help people. It's not to have a little good time by yourself. The purpose of the fire is to live a life beyond yourself. I don't see anything else in Christianity. Follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. Not follow me and I will make you somebody that sits and soaks. Follow me and I will give you a purpose to alleviate the pain and the suffering. One day we will stand before Jesus, each one of us. The only thing that matters is what we did for people. Nothing else matters. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Loses his soul. I have the privilege to sometimes sit with people that have money more than you can imagine. And I have one conversation with them. Their cars don't impress me. Their houses don't impress me. Their wealth doesn't impress me. I have one conversation with them and that is purpose. The purpose of your life. Because like Solomon, he had everything and he says it's vanity. One thing remains. Jesus made it very clear when he said, if you don't love your neighbor, how can you love God? Who is my neighbor? The one that is of a different culture. He made it very specific. Because he said, if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Even sinners do that. You don't need God, the love of God, to love people that don't speak your language. It's easy to love people who have your humor. Your color, your culture, that's nothing, powerless. So when love takes you beyond that, that the world sits up and says, wow, these people have what we don't have. Because every weekend people bride together, people visit together, and as people are exactly the same. Jesus says the publicans do that. But you as a child of God are different. And if that love doesn't change me, that fire doesn't change me to build bridges, to love you when you've hurt me, to lift you like Joseph did when you put me down, but now I have the power not to pay back, but to secure your future. What love is that? The church of Jesus is the solution. The church of Jesus. Not wishy-washy, lukewarm, spineless Christianity. The church of Jesus that addresses the real issue of the cross, reconciliation. The conversation Moses had with God. Take the sandals off your feet. Don't come. As somebody raised in the house of Egypt, Egypt. Don't come as somebody labeled by failure. Don't come as somebody labeled by inferiority. Don't come as somebody labeling, labeled with anger. Oh, beautiful people, listen to me. Many of you are ladies. I love you. You've been in our ministry forever. But some of you carry so much fire, but it's a fire of anger. And that fire is going to consume you in the end of the day. It's going to consume you. You cannot justify what Joseph's brothers did against him. You cannot. You cannot justify certain things ever. Not a hundred years from now will you uh, justify the abomination of apartheid. You will never justify it.
You never can. There's one person, it's not a politician, that can heal you from that hurt, from that rejection, from that to person that demeans you, from that person. Listen, listen, listen. The Bible says, and I believe the Bible, I stand on the Word of God, those who despised you will bow before you. But you have to rise above your emotions. You have to rise above your anger. You have to take your sandals off. And you have to allow Jesus Christ to do something wonderful in your life so that God can give you favor and God can bless you so that you can come and bring liberty and freedom in the very place that you were oppressed in Jesus' name. Can have the whole world agree with you you can you can have maybe when you're a little bit older like me 22 then your conversations are different because you know where things lead when people have an all-white conversation or an all-black conversation or a conversation that they would not be comfortable with if other people were there and I often am the party spoiler because I've lived long enough to know that certain things lead nowhere You stand before God. The Bible is very clear. He's the rock. You either cast yourself upon Him and you become broken. You become a vessel where you empty yourself. And He fills you. Or one day that rock will fall on you and grind you to power. It's, it's like people, people generally out there, charismatics, it's like they have no respect for God, no reverence. Nothing. I know the Bible says, but. No, 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 no. No. You've not had a conversation with a God I had a conversation with. Until you do not take the sandals off your feet. That person that hurt you. And you're running with that issue and you're just running and running and running and running and running and defiling and polluting other people with a fire that is not a righteous fire. You'll give account for that. Take the sandals off your feet. When God talks to you, I've been in God's presence enough. He never talks to you about anybody else. I've never had a conversation where God spoke to me about somebody else. Never. Never. I agree with you. What he did was wrong. No, be mad with him. Never. Exactly the opposite. Oh, I've had conversations with people that say, be mad. I'm mad with you. Let's get even. Let's. Let's, same conversations I had in the world. What power is that? What power is that? What power is that? Some of us that come out of the world, when, 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 when people touched your friend, you got mad with your friend. And you were just ready to smash everybody. Now you get mad with your friend. You pick up your friend's offenses. Where do you think it's going to leave you? You can pick up the fire of anger, the fire of offense, the fire of bitterness. You take God out of the equation. And your Christianity becomes powerless. And you pass that anger to your children. You pass that offense to your children and generations. Your bloodline gets disconnected because you could not deal with your offense. But you feel justified. And although what happened to you is wrong, your offense is never justified. Ever. Ever, ever, your offense and your anger is never justified. Oh, a righteous anger when a child is abused or a woman is, is, is beaten to the ground. That's a righteous anger, total different thing. But when it comes to relationships, 
When it comes to the workplace, you think you, you, you're just going to have this smooth path and, and there's going to be no injustice. You think, you think that it's just going to be plain sailing if, if they bring another law in South Africa. Do you think there's not going to be somebody else of your same skin color that's going to be used to oppose you? Hello? Hello? Some of the people that have posed me the most in my life are people of my language and my skin color. Nah, it's getting quiet. I have to be quiet. I've only got Pastor Jack now that agrees with me. You take the sandals off your feet. And you discern God for who He is. And you stay there until God heals you. Till God burns out your anger. Till God burns out that vengeance. That feeling. And we all know that. We all know that fire. And sometimes women carry that fire more. Because they have to talk 25 words, 1,000 words a day. So when it's a wrong fire, you can cause a lot of damage. Because once you put it out there, it's out there. You know, um, when you write a book, you feel the spirit of the author, right? When you read an SMS, you feel the spirit of the SMS. If somebody encourages you on the SMS, you feel it. If somebody's anger, you feel it. If somebody's bitter, you feel it. If somebody's mad, you feel it. What fire are you putting out there? The fire of the Holy Ghost that's bringing healing and reconciliation. And don't say to me again, Pastor, you don't understand. I understand much more than you understand. You're 27, you're 30, I'm 55. I've lived much longer than you. I've seen more than you. You have an opinion, I have a life. Two different things. So sometimes you just need to close your mouth and listen. I smile when I sometimes hear young people talk and say, then they're like 24, 27, Pastor Art still has a lot to learn. Thumbs up for you. Thumbs up for you. Well, praise the Lord. That's my story. <laughs> come on, give the Lord a praise. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Give the Lord a praise. Oh, come on, come on, come on. We are ready. We are ready for a revival. Come on, we are going to recover. We're going to reach the backsliders. We're going to heal the teenagers, those who fell pregnant. We don't condemn, we don't judge. We're going to go find them. We're going to go love them. We're going to put dignity on everybody. We are the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. Everybody is welcome. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you for the fire that you promised upon your church. And Father, we realize we are nothing without you. But I've heard your voice so clear and I've seen the revival that you have promised. I've seen it again and again. When I pray, I see a move. I see a generation that is unstoppable. I see, Father, people that will literally change the face of this world by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Father, I, we pray for a divine intervention for our countries. We pray that you protect the righteous who are in authority. Father, we pray that you remove those whose hearts are opposed to your kingdom, to your will. We pray those that are in authority, who say one thing, but their hearts are not for those who suffer, the poor, that you would remove them. We pray for righteous leaders. 
Father, we pray that you will raise up young men and women that will be untainted, incorruptible, young men and women that are unashamed, young men and women that will use the pain that they have been through to be a voice of healing, that they will not be a voice to spread their pain, but they will be a voice that will bring healing. Father, I pray that even those that were oppressed, those that were minimized, those that you have touched, that you would raise them to positions of authority as you did Joseph, and that as they stand in that place, they will remember that they are there to bring your goodness to all people. Father, we pray for a divine intervention in our country. We pray, Father, that you will give us righteous security forces, righteous police. Father, we expose that you, we pray that you expose the plans, the schemes of the criminals that are targeting our farming community, that are targeting our women and our children. We pray that violent criminals will be exposed. For Father, you promised that violence will no longer be in your borders, but your country will be a place of safety. Isaiah 60, and we stand on your word. That woman and children will be safe. We pray for godly wisdom. We pray for a sovereign gathering of people who love our nation. People who will rebuild this nation. People that will have a master plan to alleviate poverty, to break the yoke of poverty and unemployment. We pray for leaders who will send a message of love to all the people of South Africa. No matter what tribe, no matter what nationality, no matter what skin color. But Father, we've had many prophecies over this country that this country will be the prelude of what you will do in Africa and then to the nations of the world. So we pray. Father, that you move, that you move in the hearts of people, that sovereignly you dismantle the plans and the schemes of the enemy, that you break the hold of Satan over people in key positions. We pray that the righteous will emerge. We pray for the true fathers and mothers to emerge in this nation. That healing may come to our youth, our education system, the orphans. Jesus, you came to break the curse of poverty and we cry out to you that you will move your hand through your church that your people will go beyond comfortable Christianity to being a light to the world a voice to the nation that Father this will be a land of milk and honey for all our people the men I drive by every day that can't find jobs that justice will come that moral reform will come. That economic reformation will come. That there will be those in government who will move away from greed and power hunger to putting land in the hands of people. Pray for empowerment. Pray sovereignly that you give every child of God a vision. To be a good Samaritan, that this nation may be healed for the glory of God.
We give you honor. We bow low in our hearts before you. You are God and there is no other. We are fully aware, Father. One day we will stand before you and we'll give account. We love to hear the words when we stand before you, Jesus. One day, well done, good and faithful servant. And as much as you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. Bring back the church in power. Bring back the church in glory. Bring back the church in purpose. Bring back the church in the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. When people walk into our facilities, let your fire fall upon them, Father. Let it be a move like we have never seen. A move that is unstoppable. A move, Father, that will shape things in the future. Take the sandals off our feet. Say, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, the whole earth is filled with your glory. We bow low before you. Heal us of our pain. Heal us of our anger. Heal us of our deception. Heal us, Father, I pray. We may not be a stumbling block or an obstacle to those who are seeking you. But we will be a hand, an instrument in the hand of God. Vessels of honor fit for the master's use. We stand in your presence. We acknowledge you. As the Lord God most high. As the only true God. We revere you, we honor you, we discern you, we love you as you loved us. Silence the voice of the enemy. Still the troubled waters, Lord Jesus, in the hearts of many. Break the yoke of depression off the young people. Let a fresh fire burn. Jesus' name. I speak forgiveness. Every young person, I call you back. Free. Whole. Change. No guilt, no shame, no condemnation. A new day. Let your breath come upon people all over this continent now. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Father. We repent from every wrong conversation. May our words be few. May the faith very fire that you brought open our eyes to see. The hurt, the suffering. May that fire bring healing to every person. Every member of our congregation, stretch forth your hand. Holy Spirit, even as your spirit fell outside of the camp, even people that are watching television, people that are doing nothing but Christianity, anything, touch them now, touch them while they sleep. Go where no man can go. We pray for every member. We release your Holy Spirit to go to every person. Every lamb, every sheep, every shepherd. I feel God talking to so many people tonight. 
Some of you, no matter how long you've been fighting a battle and you feel just, you let it go. That thing is going to consume you. That thing is going to consume you. I've seen a lot. I've seen many people that carry the fire of God that are now skeletons. Many. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Just lift your hands for a moment. Come on. Whatever God is saying. A broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, these you will not despise. Jesus name focus back focus back focus back every young heart mind in Jesus name
surrender all to you. You provide the spirit. I will open up inside. You provide. There's no substitute for that. Nothing. No money can buy it. No money can buy it. You don't get it any other place but in the house of God. That's just it. What a fantastic time. I mean, I'm blessed. How do you switch off after this? I'll be awake till 3 o'clock tomorrow morning. Okay. That's just how it is. Love you all. You do amazing every single week. That was so perfect. Everything is just amazing. Amen, all of you. All these beautiful camera people, come on. They are the ones putting you in contact all over the world, these people, all of them. We love you. We have the best people ever. We are gonna um, switch me off social media now, please, quick. Tell me